Hello. So I'm going to do a class of uh, intermediate level students. Uh, I'm Al Shifroni and here we have uh, three students, Maya, Noah and uh, Ona. Uh, we start with OM. So you sit on your buttock bones and maybe you need to widen slightly the flesh of the buttocks in order to expose the bone. So you ground yourself on the bones and then use your fingers to lift your chest. Make sure not to lift the shoulders. So you can keep your elbows slightly bent if, ne if needed, but when you inhale, gently press down and lift your chest, lift your rib cage, lift your sternum. Inhale and exhale, move your shoulders back and down, shoulder blades in, widen your chest, extend your neck up, and then join your heads, head, hands in front of your chest. And before closing the eyes, make sure that you look forward at eye level and you're not looking left or right. And then observe as if you want to see the inside, the inner space of your skull. The eyes become flat and soft. And then you just allow the upper eyelids to drop and release them completely down. Look inside and observe your breath. Slow, soft inhalation. Slow, soft exhalation. With inhalation, we open the inner space of the body. With exhalation, we relax any unnecessary tension. So gradually, after a few cycles of slow, soft breath, we get to a state where Patanjali uh, defined as Stira Sukham Asana which means the correct balance between stability and holding the pose and relaxing, releasing any unnecessary tension. And in this state we'll chant OM three times or you'll join me. chest, open it, and then with exhalation, lower your head down, look inside, and surrender the brain to the seat of the heart, with gratitude for this precious moment of yoga practice. We don't take it for granted that we can do this practice, and we should feel thankful. Release your hands. Slowly, with inhalation, lift your head and gently open your eyes. Okay, we'll start with some standing poses. We need a yoga chair. Uh, so I hope you have a yoga chair. And we'll start in Utita Trikonasana with a chair on the back. Okay, so I'm demonstrating as a mirror image. We, we all do a mirror image, so when we go to the left, you go to the right. Okay, so you spread the legs and you hold the chair, which is behind you, and activate your legs, lift your kneecaps, and then the chair should be more on the left side. When you go, you can lean here and turn your chest, okay, and ex move the chest away from the pelvis and then slowly you can move your hand here and then even farther down. I'll show it from the back. Okay, so on the right side. I hold it from the back 
to move the shoulders back and shoulder blades in. And then in this way, you know, I have a lot of space here to open and to turn the chest, roll the shoulder back. And then you can move the arm here, catch the leg of the chair and slide along the leg of the chair. Finally, you can catch this lower rung. Okay, let's do it. So take your chairs, put it on the back, on the right side. We are, doing, we are doing mirror image, so put it on the left. Okay, and hold the chair. Okay, lift your knee up, cups. Cut the outer foot, the outer left foot down to lift the arch and to lift the inner leg and move the thigh back. Okay, so you're, uh, you can move the arm here. Oh, yes, it's okay. So the right arm is leaning on the chair. And then you can extend the body, especially extend the right side of the body, and move the right shoulder blade in to turn the chest from right to left. Okay, inhale and exhale. You can take the head slightly back, Anna. And this thigh should turn out completely. Okay, so if you're not sure, you can look at your right knee and see that the kneecap is in line with the center of the ankle. But you're pressing on the inner foot. Okay, then you move the arm to catch the leg of the chair. And you can slide along the leg of the chair as long as you can keep the extension on the right side of your trunk. Inhale and exhale. Finally, you can catch hold of the rung. Yes, in between the back legs of the chair and push it down against it to move the shoulder blade more in and to turn the chest. Now, if the chest has turned, you can turn the head to look up. If the chest is not turned enough and you get tension on the left side of the neck, avoid it. Inhale and come up. Okay, so one, one more point. When you catch the rung, catch it with the fingers pointing back. Not like this, because this turns the shoulder forward, so catch it like this. The other side, move the chair to the left side. Okay. And turn your left leg out completely from the root of the thigh. And just make sure that uh, the front of the ankle, the middle of the kneecap, and the middle of the top thigh are in one line. Okay, inhale and stretch your arms and with exhalation put your left hand on the chair. So you have a high support, you can use it to extend the left side and also to move the left shoulder blade in and right shoulder back. Actually two shoulders back. Inhale and exhale, soften your belly, soften your throat, soften your face. Okay, so you can live in the pose, you're not just surviving, you can breathe. And this support, you know, helps you. And now when we want to go farther down, observe your right leg, your right foot. And before you go down, press on the outer foot to lift the inner leg and press on the heel to move the thigh back. So once this back leg, the right leg is stable, you can move the arm, the left arm, and catch the leg of the chair and see how much you can slide. Still moving the shoulders back. Inhale and exhale. See that you are not accumulating unnecessary tension. And then inhale, come up. And come back to Tadasana. You can catch the chair behind you, stand in front of the chair. So the chair will give you some kind of orientation that you're uh, aligned correctly between left and right. And you can also use it to move the shoulders back, shoulder blades in, and widen the collarbones. Okay, we'll repeat Trikonasana in another way. So I'll show it here. It will be a few steps. 
Okay, we start this way. You see the foot is under the chair. Okay. And then inhale and extend here. Left, left hand can be on the waist. So here you release the ribs because often this side shorten. So we release the ribs here and extend this side. Once this side is extended, move the hand here and use it to turn the chest. So you see, when I turn the chest, I can also look up. And then finally, you can catch here. Again, turn the hand this way because this will turn the biceps out and the shoulder back. So you can catch here and then finally stretch the arm up. Okay, so three steps. Starting by extending the side. So the foot is under the chair, the chair on the right side, facing you. Because you'll need the seat of the chair. Stretch your arms, open the chest, inhale. And with exhalation, extend to the right and put your outer wrist on the back of the chair, the back rest of the chair. If you don't reach there, go, go a little closer. Go slightly closer. Yeah. The palm facing forward. This way. And now extend the right side. You see how much it is extended. Huh? Left hand can be on the waist or on the hip. Yeah. And head back, Your Honor. Yes. So you see how much this side is extended, right? Lift your knee up. Inhale and exhale. Okay, so you release the ribs from the left side to the right. Yeah. So the two lungs are breathing evenly. And then take the hand on the seat. Move it slightly forward so you can move the shoulder blades in. Okay, the right shoulder blade in. Yeah, this will help you to turn the chest. If the chest is turned completely, you can turn the neck and head. And then go down to or the leg of the chair or the rung of the chair. But turn your uh, hand so the fingers are pointing back. This will help to roll the shoulder. And then stretch your left arm. Yeah, stretch your left arm up, vertically up. Yeah, so use the arms, the stretching of the arms to widen the chest and to create space in the body. But keep the belly soft and moving with the breath. Okay, and then inhale, come up and come back to Tadasana. Okay, continue with uh, Utita Parshvakon. So, I'll show how to do it. We put the chair this time this way. And the foot, right foot, is close to the chair. So we use the chair as a lean. When you go down, you can lean on the chair. And then you can look if you make a square here. You have to make a square, right? So, but before taking really the buttock down, again, the left, the back leg, press on the outer. You see when I press on the outer foot, this lifts. When I press on the heel, this goes back. Once this leg is anchored and it is stable, you can look at you here and release until the thigh bone is parallel to the floor. Don't drop the arch here, okay, this way, but knee back. And then you can catch the rung here and stretch the arm over the head. Okay. Mm. No. Yes, okay, this way. So you lean your forearm, right forearm. So the foot is just in front of the chair. You have to spread the legs slightly more than before because this is a Tita Parshvakon. Turn the right leg completely out from the root of the thigh. And then inhale, stretch your arms. Lift your chest and then go down, bend your knee and lean with your elbow on the seat. Now, observe your left leg. Cut the outer foot down and see how much the inner thigh lifts. Press on the heel and this becomes flat. Front thigh is going back. So then you can look at your right knee and just make sure that it makes a square. 
shin bone, vertical, thigh bone, perpendicular to the floor, uh, sorry, horizontal, parallel to the floor. And roll the knee out, right knee from inside out. Yeah. Okay. Then you can move the arm to the hand, catch the rung of the chair. If uh, you can move the chair slightly, yeah, so you can catch it. Or you can put the fingertips, cup shape, down. It's also possible. And the left arm, stretch it and move it all the way to touch the back of your ear. Okay, good. So you stretch the entire left side of your body. Slightly lift more here. And when this leg is anchored and you stretch this arm, the entire side is extended. Okay, then inhale and come up. Yes, good. On the other side, move the chair to your left side. Left foot next to the chair. Observe your left leg, see that you completely turn it out. And then stretch your arms, widen and broaden your chest, color bones, to stretch, to open from the center of the chest. And lift the chest also, tailbone in. Okay, and then exhale, go down, bend your left leg and put your form on the seat of the chair to support yourself. So you can, you know, pay attention more to the details of the pose. And the details I mentioned now, the back leg, cut the outer foot and press the heel. This will anchor the leg correctly. So the front thigh is going back, the inner thigh is lifted. And you maintain the space at the pelvis. Even if you now look at your right, left leg and drop the buttock bone to the heel, Move the buttock bone diagonally to the heel until you make a square. Inhale and exhale. Okay. And then at your own time, you know, you can uh, move the hand either to the round. You can move the chair slightly back. So you can catch, you know, even the leg of the chair, wherever, you know. And then right arm stretch over the head. Yeah. Okay, chin. Now this outer armpit should roll down into the spine and maintain. Yeah, try to roll this. Okay, good. And the knee here, left knee, press against the upper arm. The upper arm is resisting, but the inner knee is pressing. So the knee is going out. Okay, then inhale, come up and come back to Tadasana. Tadasana, inhale and exhale. And relax. See the effect of uh, what we already done. Uh, we did two standing pose, poses, and Utita Trikonasana twice, Utita Parshvakon once. So now you can, stay in, you can stay in Tadasana while I show the second variation that we can use a chair for uh, Utita Parshvakon. This is a little bit, bit more um, opening, challenging. So um, maybe Maya, since you are in period, you can repeat the previous, uh, okay? Basically, this uh, uh, lateral standing poses can be done uh, even while menstruation, but uh, you should not uh, harden the belly and you should not uh, exert too much. Okay, so we put the right foot but uh, look carefully how I put my heel. This is the center of the heel against the edge here. And then I move this leg back and turn the foot slightly. Okay, so I start from here and then I go down. Okay, again, before going down, cut the outer foot there and lift the inner arch. And this goes back. Knee here, turn out and buttock comes in, tailbone in, and then you can extend your spine and you go down until more or less you make a square here. And then you put your hand here and come to the pose. Okay, so there's much more space here, much more opening in the groins, and there's more weight anchoring on the back leg.
Okay, let's do it. Yeah, maybe you can repeat uh, with just leaning with the forearm on the seat. The previous version without going even down, just yeah, this way. And you want to try the more challenging? Yes, I'll try. Try. Even if you don't make a square, okay. whatever you can do. So first you put the right foot, then you step back with the left. Uh, but uh, the, middle of, yeah, the middle of the heel should be against the edge. So it will not slide and the foot will be active. A little bit up, you know. Yeah, here, okay. If the chest slides, you can put it against the wall, but here it doesn't slide. Okay, stretch your arms, inhale. And then, before you go, activate your back leg. Or maybe you step a little bit back. Yeah, okay. And the foot slightly, okay. And then you start to go down, but uh, maintain the left leg stable. Maintain the outer foot of the left, cutting down. And go down, go down, until you make a square if possible. And then inhale again, lift your chest. And then extending your right side to your right hand, bend and put your hand on the seat. Uh, can you put it be behind, Rona? Because then the shoulder will go back. Yeah, the arm can be on the hip, so you can take the head back, shoulder back, knee against the arm, okay, and then stretch the arms and move it circularly to touch the back of the ear. Okay, so try to move this shoulder blade forward. Yeah, stretch the entire left side until your nails here, all the way. Yeah. Good, so do you feel the more opening in the groins? Yeah. yeah. Move your left eye uh, back here, open the back of the knee and press on the heel. Okay, then come up. We're doing good. On the other side. We still have another side, or no? <laughs> we have two sides. Fortunately, we don't have uh, many legs because then we'll have to do a thousand times. <laughs> Okay, so you put you to put uh, the center of the heel carefully against the edge, and then step back with your right foot. Yeah. Okay. Stretch your arms. Inhale. Lift your chest. Exhale. You start to go down, but make sure the right foot, the right leg, remaining stable. See, there is a. It's a much easier now to press really. A, really nicely the outer foot because because of the elevation of the front leg okay and on your own time you can bend and put the hand and fingertips you know cup shape on the chair and press the knee outer knee against the upper arm on the left inhale and exhale shoulder back shoulders back head back yes okay so maybe you can turn the chest and belly this way. Mm -hmm. Then stretch the arm and move it. Yeah, and stretch your entire right side. Good. Okay, so the foot is active, right, left foot, and the knee is pressing against the upper arm. Inhale and exhale, two more cycles before we go up. Okay, and then in inhale to come up, stand in Tadasana. Stretch your arms, so feel how the body already opens. Chest is wide, and when you stretch the arms down, you move the shoulder blades down, and then you cut them in and extend the neck. Relax your throat, relax your eyes. Breathe quietly. The breath will find its own pace. You just make sure that you're not holding your breath. You're allowing the breath to flow. Okay. One more standing pose, Parshvatanasana. Again, we'll do it in two ways. So uh, I'll show it. Okay, so first we put the leg forward and we use. Oh, let's, let's start this way. Maybe it will be easy. 
right foot on the chair, you have to take the chair upside down. If you don't have a yoga chair, you can keep the chair uh, upright. Okay, again, the elevation of this foot activate this leg from the ankle, knee, hip, and then you can turn, okay? So the left hip you have to roll forward and you can feel that the two buttocks are in line, tailbone in. Okay, look up, open the chest. And when you use this leg, back legs of the chair, you can push back. So this thigh is going back and the heel becomes heavy. Then, once this is anchored back, you, can, you want to extend forward. So you can slide your arms here, elbows, look forward. And you see I push against the legs of the chair to move the chest forward and look forward. Maintaining the uh, rotation of the pelvis. Then I go a little bit more. Again, pressing the elbows against the legs of the chair. Okay, finally, when you got this extension, you can move the hands to the front legs and go a little bit more down. Whatever you can. Okay? So now we, we go with you because we are not facing you. So let's start from the, you also start from the right, okay? Otherwise, I think it will be confusing because we are not facing you, we are lateral, sideways. So, right foot on the chair, put it high, as high as possible. Okay. Then, stand up, put your hands on the hips. Okay. Anchor your left heel. Yeah, so... And then, widen the left buttock sideways to the left and with your thumbs you can even hold this way and push your tailbone in see this way so the tailbone is in and then what you should feel the action comes from the tailbone and from the hips but you should feel the ascent of the lower belly from the pubis to the navel and then stretch your arms up lift your chest and then uh, exhale, go forward, put your hands on the chair. So this is a very good support, very high support. But push against this support to really be strong on your left heel and on the outer foot. But maintaining the rotation of the pelvis. If you're not sure, you can use one hand to touch. Yeah, just for a second to touch and to make sure. Yes, but you are fine. Okay. So first we anchor the left leg, left foot. Then we want to start to extend forward and to extend the trunk and to move the chest forward. So you start to slide your arms on the chair and you press against the legs of the chair. As you go forward, you move the sternum away from your belly. Look forward. Now, back, you want to feel the back is extended. The whole trunk is extended. Maintaining, yep, just press a little bit on this, this way, and maybe you can stay at this stage and don't exert yourself too much. Just make sure that you are breathing, you're maintaining the belly soft. Okay, but you too, if possible, you can slide a little bit more down, pressing the elbows against the legs of the chair, move the chest slightly forward with inhalation. And then with exhalation, maybe you start to go a little bit down and catch the front legs of the chair. Still looking forward and then you can go down as much as possible, maintaining the legs absolutely straight. The hip rotated, I mean the left hip is going forward and the left heel is heavy, is pressing down. It, be, it becomes much easier when we elevate in this way the right foot. Okay, then you come up and move the right foot to the left so you maintain the distance and change. We change. Yes. Oh, yeah, we don't need to turn now. Okay, and stand up again. Put your hip, hands on the hips. 
roll your right hip forward. You can even touch you know, the buttocks and even moving the elbows back, touching even the sacrum coccyx, move it in. Okay, so the action comes from the buttocks, from the tailbone, but the reaction, what you feel, is that the belly comes up and it comes closer to your lumbar spine and it is soft. You don't need to do it, the action from the belly. You do it from the hips, from the buttocks, from the anal mouth, you suck up, okay, and then stretch the arms up. And use the arms to lift the chest because this is a job of the arms now. Lift your rib cage and then exhale, go forward. And again, the same technique. We first we use the chair to push against the chair to shift weight more and more to the right heel. Once the right heel is anchored, we start to slide. And the idea now is to extend forward, extend the trunk forward. Keep rolling the right thigh, right hip yeah, in. So you keep your pelvis aligned and see how much you can extend more and more. The more extension for the spine is better. Yeah, so the chin is pulling forward also. Once the chin is forward, imagine it is connected somehow to the sternum and the sternum is also going forward away from the upper abdomen. And slightly, slightly, slowly you go down. And move your hands to the front legs of the chair. And then you take your belly down, then chest, finally the head, if possible, but without shortening, without contracting on the upper belly. Maintain it soft. Okay, inhale, come up. And we're going to do one more variation of uh, Parashvatan. In this, we put the back leg against the chair. Okay, so I put my right heel against the wall, sorry. So this is a little bit like what we did in Utita Trikonasana. So first I turn. So I feel with one hand the two buttocks are aligned, the same distance from the wall, tailbone in. And then I go forward, this way, and stretch forward. And you see the buttocks are, okay. And slide forward. This is the first step, because here you have a long belly. You can extend your abdomen. And then you go here, and you start reach forward here by pressing the heel against the wall reach forward reach forward reach forward and finally you go here and then you can even move the hands down and come to the final pose okay so left foot against the wall now again we go in steps i don't know if you reach here so slightly forward this. Yeah. Just measure the distance rather that you can reach your outer wrist to the back rest. Yes. Maybe a little bit more, so you need to extend yourself. Okay, left foot pushing against the wall. Okay, put your hands on your hips and align. Yeah. Widen the left buttock. Roll the left hip forward, right hip back, tailbone in, and then inhale, lift your arms, and from the hips, extend yourself forward to find the back rest of the chair. And if uh, you can move the chair, if it doesn't fit exactly, you, so you can move it a little bit forward. Yeah. Oh, backward, yes. <laughs> Okay, you can touch with one hand the hips or the buttocks to just make sure that uh, they are aligned. Yeah. Okay. And work on extension again. Extension forward. We want to have a long back. And the chest moving away. Yeah. Lift your knee up and then the legs active. 
but find space for the breath. Yeah. Learn how to relax inside the effort. This Patanjali says Payatna Shaitilya. And Guruji uh, Yenga translated it as uh, the effort to perform the pose becomes effortless. Then the asana uh, becomes perfect. So you can go to the second stage. So we always have to seek a balance between the activity and the relaxation, between the effort and non-effort. Because finally the pose should be done with less and less effort. So the same amount of out output we can gain with less and less input. So it's not about exerting ourselves like you know we do in sports or gymnastics. Okay, then you start to go, once you get the extension, you, you can start to go down and you can uh, catch the legs, front legs of the chair. Yeah, you can stay with your forehead on the chair. And then if possible, even hands down and head down. But, uh, Rona, you can you also you stay a little bit higher, yeah, so you can maintain the extension here. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then come up, and we need to do the other leg, right? So, right leg. Okay, so again, hands on the hips, lying, so you know what to do already. You extend the buttocks down, widen the right buttock and tighten the mid-buttock so the tailbone will come in and you lift from the pelvic floor. Yeah, feel the lift, elevation, extension, then lift the bottom ribs and then lift your arms and extend the sides of the body and uh, inhale and with exhalation extend forward, reach forward to uh, lean on the chair. You're on the back rest. Okay. Right, don't forget your right foot is against the wall, so press it against the wall. Don't detach from the wall. Yeah, good, as if you want to move the wall away to enlarge this uh, studio. I need more space here, so push. <laughs> push your right foot against the wall. Make my studio larger. Okay, once you are extending, put your hands on the seat and keep extending, slide forward, slide forward. Not the legs, you know, you have to imagine as if somebody is pulling you from the hip, from the front groins here for, backward, but you are extending forward. So the legs are moving back, but from the hips, the trunk is extending forward. And then finally, a little bit more down. Maintaining the length, go closer to your left leg. But you can stay wherever is, you know, uh, you can hold the pose without too much tension, without, you know, uh, overstretching your uh, hamstrings of the left. You have to maintain the kneecaps lifted, okay? And the back of the knee, yeah, good. And then see that you are giving a nice stretch to the leg, left leg, but not too much. Don't overdo. Okay, then inhale, come up. Good. Uh, can you get a block? We need the, uh, I want to show you two ways to do a, a now, Supta Virasana. Supta Virasana is a great pose to relax the legs after standing. And we can use the chair in two ways. Uh, if the pose is difficult for you, you can take the chair upside down and then you can sit on a block and use a bolster. Okay, so I put the bolster on here on the ranks of the chair and sit. So this, almost everybody can do this variation. Yes, so the calf muscle you have to soften and extend away from the knees and then you sit on the block and and lie back on the chair. So this is, is a variation that I believe everybody can do. If not, you can take more height. 
And then, if you want a little bit more challenging, more opening, you can use a folded chair. So the bolster you keep next to you, we'll need it later. And the chair you put upright, facing you. Okay, bolster I prepare here. And I sit in Varasana in front of the chair. Okay, again, for Virasana. And then I take the chair, but see that it is not folded. So I put, you see, I put my elbow here, so the chair is not folded. Because if it will be folded at this stage, it will be difficult to move it this way. Once it is here, then you fold it. And then you lie on the seat of the chair and put this for the head. Uh, the chair protests a little bit, but it subsumes. Okay. So this is a very relaxing way. It also supports your sacrum and gives you a wide support for your back. Then we come up, we join the heels to Vajrasana and we go forward, extending forward and then relaxing down. Okay. Oh. You choose which way you prefer and we stay a few minutes in Sukta Virasana. Uh, for period, you can use the chair this way or just the bolster. Just lie down on the bolster, whatever. Okay. Find the, the second one, is that okay? What? The second one. Yeah, you can, you can do it also, yeah. But maybe we'll give you a little bit more height. Okay. okay. But you can do it, yes. So, okay, so you sit in, if you want to do the second variation, you sit at Virasana in front of the chair, your calf muscle should move away from the knee and back and out slightly. You have a bolster next to you, okay. You do the first one. Ah, you do the first one, so the chair upside down. Oh. Okay, Nirona and Maya, uh, turn around, catch the chair, but put your elbow so the chair will not fold. Okay. Yeah, don't allow it to fold somehow. Okay, good. And then pass it through and then fold it. Now for you, Maya, I put another bolster here and another blanket here. So you can be comfortable and relax your belly. Uh, do you need to, you don't, you can take the bolster only for the head, my uh, Rona, if you can always add bolster, but uh, Okay, maybe you, uh, Rona, you can move a little bit this way to the head side so the edge of the seat here will support the sacrum so then the sacrum will go in and yeah, if it's too high for you, the bolster, we can take a blanket. Underneath the head or? Under the head, head yes. Okay. Is it enough? Yes. Yeah. So, so you have a wide support for your back. <laughs> you have a weight on the top thighs. And the top thighs should go down. Hmm? I don't know. Uh, I'll do the second one. Sec so, so you can ah, do. Okay. It was too challenging for you? No, I'll, I'll do like that. Ah, okay. It is too challenging. So, turn around, catch the chair, and see that you, when you move it, it will not fold. Yeah, good. Okay, so, in the pose, again, as I said, roots of the thighs, the top thighs should relax down with the exhalation. And then the sides of the navel should relax down with second exhalation. And then you see that the throat is soft and it is relaxing to the back of the neck. And finally relax the eyes into the sockets. Okay, now I'll give you also a blanket for the head. 
because the back of the neck also should be extended. You feel better. Thank you. Okay, so you can keep using your exhalations, top thighs, navel, the sitting down, throat, and eyes. These four regions of the body relax with the exhalations. You can make a cycle of four exhalations, scanning these four regions of the body. And relax your face, allow your eyebrows to move away from each other. And we stay one more minute. Relax your belly. Now, this is a very good uh, rest for the legs. Extends the quadriceps, which we, you know, tighten and contract when we do the standing poses. We make them strong, but now we also need to extend them. And it's good for the knees because it sucks all the blood out of the knee. And then when we straighten the legs, the blood rushes in. Now, the, one of the problems of the knee is that uh, the cartilage of the knee doesn't get much circulation and then it takes a long time to heal if there is any injury. So, when you do these poses, of course, if you have a real injury, you need to go to a knowledgeable certified teacher, but uh, generally speaking, this pose is good for the knee because of the reason I told you, because it increases the circulation, not when you're on the pose, but while, when, once you come out of the pose. Okay, so now come out slowly, and, but join your feet, join your heels, and sit on your heels. And then, okay, sit in Vajrasana on your heels, and then extend forward. First be on your fingertips and look forward. Yeah, so the chair is here, it helps you to round a little bit the lower back. My head's okay for you? No? Okay. And then finally you can keep extending the arms and take the, uh, put your palms down, put your forehead down and just relax. So this is a kind of uh, antidote. Yeah, but start your arms forward. After going backward, mm. supta. We go forward, extend the back, and release any tension if you might have, uh, you know, in the lower back. Okay, let's slowly come up and we do Adhamukha Svanasana. We use the chair again to support the hands. Okay, so. I'll just show it here, in the center. Okay, so you can use uh, two steps here. Again, if the chair slides, you put it uh, against the wall. So you see, I put the base of my palm and press back. And then, so you can just select one of these options or do both. The first one I showed is uh, easier. And here I put my thumb, you know, on the frame hole of the bottom part of the seat. And with the fingers I catch the uh, leg of the, the frame of the chair. Okay, this way. Mm -hmm. This way. You see? Okay. And then the uh, uh, elbows can be supported on the legs of the chair. And then I just can extend the neck, make it very long, and the head release down. This will go, uh, be a preparation for Shashasana, because in Shashasana also the neck should be long, and the back of the head should go down, and shoulder blades should go in. So there are many aspects of Shashasana. Okay, so you can select one of these two, or 
spend less time in each and do both. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't have a yoga chair, you'll have to do only the first. Yeah, you can do the second. Okay. Yeah, step a little bit back, Rona. And then make your back more concave. Okay. Maybe step a little bit still more back. No, no, back, back, back. And try to put your arm. Yeah, okay. And then you can release your head. Yeah, the elbows on the legs of the chair. Yeah, good. And turn the biceps out, triceps in, and release the head completely. Release the back of the neck, and just allow the head to hang freely. Okay, you want to go to the second variation? Okay. So this is a good preparation for Shushasana. So activate the legs, but completely relax the head, brain, neck, and throat, and eyes. Yeah. Uh, okay, you can put your thumb maybe here, and whatever is more comfortable, and then on the, on the frame, like this. Uh, let me show you, and then this way. Mm. And then step more back, even exaggerate, so you can make your back. Oh, it hurts the hip. Oh, okay, you're, you're uh, delicate. <laughs> For me, it's no problem. Uh, Maya, step a little bit back and try to reach the elbows, if possible, you know, if it's not possible. But if you walk back to the edge of the stick, oh, it's still more, still more, still more, still more. No? And then release your head, okay, and support your elbows here on the rung. Mm -hmm. So this support of the elbows and the arms will allow you to completely release the head and neck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready for Shishasana? So, since Maya is uh, a period, she will not do uh, Shishasana because going upside down is not good while you are in period. So you'll do Supta Bada Konasana, so you get a belt and you do. And you are not doing Shushasana today. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot do Shushasana, the substitu substitute will be Urdhva Prasarita Padasana. Not for period, but for other people that cannot do uh, Shushasana. And you can use the chair uh, for Shushasana. Um, okay, so let's, let's just take uh, the sticky mat here, so you'll face... Against the wall? Uh, yeah, against the wall there, okay. And, and uh, Rona can be here. Okay. A big one or a small one? No, you don't need a, do you need a blanket? Put just the folded stick in it here. You need a blanket for the head? Yeah, I, I use a three-folded blanket uh, to uh, lift my head. Uh, you can see why also in, uh, in my book, Props for Yoga, Volume 3, which is all about inversions. But uh, just to, uh, you know, if the upper arms are long and longer than the neck and head, then you need to fill this gap somewhere. And we fill it with a blanket which can be three-folded or two-folded and then you put it under the chair and you go up and the chair will support your shoulder blades. Okay? Okay, and you put the belt and you go down. Okay. So this is Urdhva Prasarita Padasana supported. If you cannot do Shirshasana. The hands are... The hands are down, the, the wrists are down, yes. Here. Yeah. Okay, so the hands, the forearms are not on the blanket, just the head. They need to press down on the sticky mat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you walk forward until your shoulder blades are against the chair, and then you lift one leg and stabilize yourself. Uh, maybe you can get come closer under the chair because so the chair will really support your shoulder blades. Okay. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, lift one leg. Okay. Yeah. And lift your shoulders in Shirshasana. Press the forearms. See how much you can press the entire forearm. Also the outer wrist side. Because only then you'll be able to lift your upper arms, you know, deltoid muscles, shoulder blades. And once your shoulder blades are lifted and the shoulders are lifted, extend the neck down. Extend the back of the neck, as we did in Adumukha Shvanasana before. Stretch your legs up. When you stretch your legs, also try to lift your pelvis, lift your buttocks. So the buttock bones are going to the heels. And then relax your eyes. No, the whole three of you and relax the eyes and breathe comfortably as the pose requires. These two are very restorative poses so the breath can go uh, gradually slower and uh, in Shashasana you need to use the breath for the extension and uplift of the body. And we stay like two minutes more. And then we'll close up with a Salamba Savangasana. Okay, so here the feet should be active and uh, you should lift the inner foot, inner arches, and the outer foot should go down. So there is a rolling action of the metatarsals from outside in, yeah. So the ankles, inner, inner ankles are touching and big toes are touching. And then you lift the calf muscles to the heels. You need to take the heels slightly forward, Rana. Yeah, not too much, but slightly forward. And be stable on your shoulders. Maintain the uplift of your shoulders. Also lift your sternum. And the front ribs, sometimes they tend to stick out in Chirchasana, so you need to take them in and up. Okay, and then slowly come down. And stay in Adho Mukha Virasana. Okay, so next will be a Sarvangasana, and we use a platform. Yeah, you can stay a little bit more and then go to Situbanda Sarvangasana. And now I bring, we bring blankets and a block. I'll show you uh, how to, so yeah, so bring blankets. Uh, if possible, six blankets. Without the chair? No, without the chair. So one blanket. We just spread below and then we, put, we stack five blankets on the, this one yeah so how much three two more yes. okay good so you need, if you don't have a blankets, you can use any other substitute, foam blocks, bo even bolster, but blankets are the best. And it has to be about five centimeters or two inches high. And it should be wide enough and long enough to uh, support your forearms. Yeah, upper arms, sorry. So if, if the elbows are off the platform, it's not good. Then we need a belt. And since we lift the shoulders, we also, in Halfo Alasana, we want to lift the feet also, because otherwise we take the toes too much down. So this is one reason I always use a block for Halasana, when I measure the distance from the block. Thank you. And also, uh, it has one more purpose, which is even more important, that if I place the block in the center here of the mat, and I center myself, then I know that the legs are going straight line, aligned, and not crooked, not going left or right. Okay, you also need to measure the belt here. And when we go to Alasana, uh, 
you don't need to put the belt on your arms, you just, you can catch the belt this way. Maybe I'll just show it uh, how to use the belt for halasana. Okay, so you see, you look, the palms are facing up and you can hold it wider or narrow. If you can hold it narrow, it's better because then it will help you to roll the shoulders in. So you'll be supported more on the shoulders and less on your neck. You need to be on the shoulder. This is a shoulder stick. Okay, so I start like this. Hold the belt. Measure, okay, such that the lower third of the neck on the platform. Okay, and I center myself. I hold the edges of the mat and then roll over. And then I, I, my toes need to find the block. And then hold with palms facing up and adjust myself on the top of my shoulders. You see, from side to side. And then loop the belt around the elbows. Yeah. And it's better to touch the skin here and to lift it with the hands and come up. Okay, let's do it. I showed it because once you're in the pose, you don't see your screen anymore. And then you slide to relax like this. And from here, you can go to Shavasana. So I just show how to move to Shavasana. So you take one blanket and you roll the others. Okay, and you support your knees on this roll and take this one for your head and neck. Okay, and you adjust yourself, Shavasana, and completely relax. Okay, so you can go to Sitabanda now and you arrange your platforms. Okay, so you see now he's using a flat pillow and maybe an extra blanket on it because maybe you need it, yeah, or, or two, two, whatever you need, you know, it depends, it's a little bit individual, it depends on the length of your neck and the movement of your shoulders, how much movement and flexibility you have in the shoulders. Okay, measure the distance of the block and, and the block should be on the sticky mat, otherwise it can move and then it will mislead you. Sit here or? Yeah, you sit on the edge in the dasana. So no, the block has to be here. Mm -hmm. Because the toes, yeah, this is good. Okay. And make sure it is in the center, then adjust the uh, belt for the width of your shoulders, turn around, hold the belt in one hand. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is a substitute for ladies in period, Setubanda Savangasana. Uh, the effect is pretty much like Savangasana. I mean, uh, this uh, from the same family of asanas. Uh, just slide a little bit more until your uh, shoulders are resting down here. Yeah. Okay, so she put uh, a belt, so then she can relax the legs, it will hold, and I help her to lift the shoulder blades so the chest will be open, and the belly is soft, and then she can relax. And okay, you arrange yourself, Okay, did you hold the belt and uh, arrange the shoulder? Okay. This is very important, before you go up, you need to be on the top of your shoulder. So take the time, move from one shoulder to another and roll it in. Shoulders should go toward each other, closer to each other. So they function like the feet of Tadasana. As we press the feet in Tadasana to lift up, we need to press the shoulders down to lift up the spine. And ideally, there should not be any load on the neck, just on the shoulders and upper arms. Okay. 
Okay, so you see, uh, in many respects, uh, Sarvangasana is the opposite of Shirshasana. In Shirshasana, these ribs, the false ribs here, are, tends to stick out. Here, they go too much in. So try to move them out, out and up. And then buttocks in and thighs back. Yeah, try to make yourself upright. Yeah, good. So tighten the buttocks in and lift the front thighs and move them back and stretch your legs up. But keep pressing on outer shoulder, outer upper arm, outer elbow and supporting the back. Okay, lift the top of your sternum. I mean, the, it is a bottom, it's a xiphoid up. And the top of the sternum, actually, the manubrium bone here, between the collarbones, you move forward toward the chin. Relax your face, relax your eyes. Okay, in this pose, you can even gently close your eyes or keep your eyes open but soft. We're getting close to Shavasana, so you need to hold the pose, of course. You need to use your arm, especially upper arms, shoulders, legs. But at the same time, you can relax your head, face, brain, eyes. We stay two more minutes, try to uh, observe your breath and make it more rhythmical. Breathe deeply into the top chest in order to, to help you to lift, you know, to be on the shoulders and lift the shoulder blades, lift your upper back, lift your sternum. Okay, so you're stable and you're upright. Because the tendency here is that we close. It's the opposite, you know. Of Shirshasana. Also in Shirshasana, because we stand on the head, there is support of the spine, of the center. And in Sarvangasana, because we are in the shoulders, there is support for the sides. So here you have to see that you lift the center. So it's more challenging to lift the spine here. So try to lift your dorsal spine and move it in. So the chest is coming closer to your face. And you get the Jalandera Banda effect. But at the same time, keep your throat absolutely passive. Don't, you don't need to contract the muscles of the throat. Allow the inner walls of the throat to spread. Eyes soft eyebrows expanding away from each other. The skin of the temples is going to the bone and not vice versa. So you are not creating tension in your face. Okay, then we slowly go to a halasana and try to find the block with the toes. If not, you know how to align yourself. Yeah, the toes should be on the center, very good. Then you take the belt out. Again, hold it with your palms facing up, this way, to turn the shoulders. Yeah, hold it with two hands, uh, Rona, and with uh, palms facing up, and if possible, closer to each other. Yeah, okay. And then move the arms back away from your chest. One side at a time, move the arms back, move the short shoulders more back than your chest. And you extend the armpit arm. Okay, if we have, if we can divide the armpit to two parts, the chest, upper arm, chest armpit, and arm armpit, the armpit of the arm should go back to your hand and the armpit of the chest go up. And your thighs should go up. So press on the toes, press on your shoulders, press on your elbows, and lift your thighs away from your face. Inhale softly in the pose. Mm. 
Okay, so holding this way, we maintain the extension of the arms and we press the arms down, press the shoulders, so we can lift the upper back and the neck. And then from here, slowly bend your uh, legs and bring your feet closer so you can go to Karnapidasana. Okay, there is a variation of this. If you can maintain the shoulders back, you can then move the arms and hug the back of your knees. Like Noah is doing? Uh, you want to? Yes, okay. Yeah. And you can also release the uh, top of your foot down or hold on your toes. Um, because actually this, again, may be too low. Uh, here it is going fine, but for you it's better on the toes because otherwise it's too low, because, because we lift the shoulders on the platform. Ideally, we should lift also the feet here. Okay, and then put your hands, your arms back and slowly slide down. You can also slide the whole sideways to the right side. And we prepare for Shavasana. So you can take one blanket for your head and the other blankets or if you use a pillow okay put it under your knees under your calves and the block yeah roll it the block you can put either on your belly or on your forehead yeah so arrange your shoulders first you can touch your shoulders roll the outer shoulder and slide the shoulder blade down to the mid-back, buttocks away from your lumbar, so you're spreading yourself. Okay, and then you can put the block here just to help you relax the belly. Yeah, you can put on your forehead, so there will be two options. So shoulders are heavy, elbows are heavy, hands are passive, fingers are passive. The outer shoulder should go down, and when the outer, outer shoulder is going down to the floor, the thumb side is also going down. Mm -hmm. So feel how the shoulder blades are supporting your chest behind, but without any tension, without any uh, action or contraction in your uh, back muscles, relax completely the back muscles, allows them, allows them to spread away from the spine, upper back, mid back, lower back, lumbar, lumbar spine is going closer and closer to the floor, buttocks are soft, and the gluteus muscle of the buttocks spreading, and become very soft and then your legs are heavy, your thighs are heavy on the support and relax all the way to your feet and toes. Once the entire body is uh, relaxed, attend to your head and face. Now you spread your face from center sideways, from the center of the forehead from in between the eyebrows, you spread left and right. You allow the cheeks to move away from the nose. You allow the lips to be soft and widen, and the tongue rest in the center of the mouth, you know, filling up the entire inner space, inner cavity of the mouth, and the jaws are relaxed. You observe the joint here of the jaw, a lower jaw, and relax it. Relax the root of the tongue, and from there you can reach your throat. And again, widen the inner walls of the throat. And allow the throat to descend on the back of your neck. Be quiet for 
few seconds, a few moments here in the pose. Recovering yourself. Charging. After practice, the mind is connected better with the body. We have more sensitivity in the body, we have more better connection between mind and body. And that's why we can be more effective in Shavasana. You can observe the body from inside. You can feel the inner space and inner organs. If you try to do it at uh, the beginning of the practice, it will not be the same. Because you will not be integrated and connected in that way. Okay, then uh, put your hands on your belly. If you have a block, remove it and put it on the left side. Inhale slightly deeper. Take a, like two or three uh, cycles of breath in which the inhalation is a little bit more, not very dramatic, just a little bit to allow you to come out of the pause. And then bend your legs. Bring them closer to you and roll to your right side. Make yourself comfortable on the right side with your right hand under your right temple and the knees close to your chest. And left hand is already on the floor in front of your chest just to uh, get ready to come up. But you stay a few seconds here. Never come up with the head, lift the head immediately after Shavasana. Always roll to your side. And then when you're ready, you press the left hand to lift yourself, straighten your left leg, and come to a sitting position. So sit upright, and you can join your hands again, close your eyes, and just reflect, observe what you feel now after this practice of maybe 70 or 80 minutes and compare it to what you felt in the beginning when we started not only the body but also the mind what was the transformation of the mind well, you probably feel the mind quiet centered Spacious, vast like the sky, and empty. So gradually, by this transformation, daily transformation of the body and mind, we develop, we transform ourselves and become more yogis. Okay, make sure you lift your chest with inhalation and exhale head down. So and the, the brain to the seat of the heart. Release your hands. Inhale, lift your head up. And gently, quietly open your eyes. And this is all for this session. Thank you. Thank you, Maya, Noah, and Rona. <laughs>